Thank you very much. Uh, I am uh, Manny Subramanian. I'm the inventor and the founder of HRT, Heart Repair Technology. I am an octogenarian. I don't need uplift yet, <laughs> Pro probably soon, and uh, maybe I'll invest in it. Yeah. So I've been a, a cardiac surgeon for 40 years and started at the University of Minnesota with the Wall well, Lilaha, you heard about that in the previous address, and uh, I've been an inventor for at least a little over four technologies, which has already made a tremendous impact and a good exits. I'm in the fifth curve. I think I'll do a sixth curve also. This is my disclosure and a disclaimer. We are about a transcatheter mitral bridge and tricuspid bridge which is basically offering a central solution for a central problem. It's for the treatment of heart failure in mitral and tricuspid regurgitation, otherwise called the leaky valves. What is the problem, Ina? There's a tremendous amount of leakage back into the upper chambers in both sides of the heart, which causes heart failure, which basically is terrible quality of life. That means you're huffing and puffing every time you walk. You have fatigue, blown up legs, blown up belly. Most importantly, 50%, I repeat, 50% die in three years, three years from the diagnosis. That looks very ominous. Even with maximum medical therapy, even with lesser grades of moderate leaks. So you need to really get those leaks down to zero or mild. It's a big problem. It's tough out there. Over five million US patients suffer from symptomatic mitral and tricuspid regurgitation. They need therapy. Medication has been mostly ineffective. Surgery helps, but it's very invasive, limited to few patients. 10,000 in the US. Current transcatheter therapy, like a mitroclip, Pascal, think they are good. They're only limited for severe disease. Many patients are excluded from therapy. In the randomized trial and clinical trials, they will show that 90% success rate, but in the real practical world, over two thirds are refused because of challenges in the procedure and the anatomical restrictions. Less than 2% of patients are treated by this therapy. That's the adverse presentation, J.P. Morgan Conference 2021. Bottom line, there's a tremendous, large, unmet clinical gap. It's about a, over a $5 billion in the US alone, the market opportunity by 2028. A good growth rate of 15%. What is the real problem? You see in the bottom, mitral and tricuspid there's a white and a green. It's like a girdle, right? There's a girdle and there's a curtain, which is the central part of the curtain. As the girdle becomes bigger and bigger, these curtains move out, you have a huge gap. So you really need to decrease that gap, decrease the central annular dilatation, which is a central issue. So to do that, in most instances, you gotta have a need aggressive, a little over 35 to 45%, sometimes 50% of that diameter. You really have to close the gap of the ventricle contracts so it doesn't leak. But the remaining part of the girdle is fine. It's functioning well, it's important to keep the left ventricular function and the leaflet in proper position. Bottom line, you gotta achieve none or mild leaks if you want to affect the natural history survival rate for these patients. There are current repair solutions, but they do not address well the enlarged central annular dilatation, which I mentioned is a central issue. So we have the rings, annuloplasty rings. What does it do? It's a circumferential cinching to get the point A to point B. Looks like it's going too far around a circle. If I want to cross from Manhattan to Staten Island, I take a Verrazano Bridge. I don't go around the Jersey to get to that point. Isn't that right? Yes. 
it is too complex, too many anchors, too many sutures in the surgical, so it doesn't produce you know, good reduction. It's insufficient reduction. Also, it's jailing the annulus, like you know, tightening your sphincter in the bottom of your orifice. So it doesn't work. They have the leaflet repair. I think it's a good solution. You basically clip the leaflet, but don't do anything to the annulus. It's still enlarged. So you can only use that in a limited patient population. So high ineligibility rate, technical procedure complexity, suboptimal procedural patient outcome. So there is an opportunity for better solutions. This is where we come. This is a very disruptive solution, rather simple. You simply bridge the gap with a bridge. So we have a mitral bridge, we have a tricuspid bridge. Very simple and intuitive because it directly reduces the diameter. It doesn't jail the, the annulus. There's no leaflet clipping. Because it's simple, it's very quick. Procedure time is less, at least in the surgical. And it targets a broader population. It doesn't restrict this to only a two-thirds, one-third of the patient population. We can put it in more than 90 to 95 percent of the patients. Does it work? Concept is gay. Yes, it works. It's safe. We did the surgical studies. European C mark is approved. Mild leak or trace in 96 percent of the patients at four years. Nobody had moderate or severe leak. No device related events, adverse events. The device is durable, has not been explanted so far. So the same thing was tried in the tricuspid later on. Same results. At 18 months, 100% of the patient had a mild tricuspid leak. None of them has been taken out, no device related adverse events. So we leverage this now currently to do the transcatheter percutaneous bridge. Again, our objective is very clearly outlined to do this for all the proceduralists, not just for the artist, just like the clipping or the Anne LeBlanc, you know, only a few people do that. When you go to the mainstream, they're not able to do that. The mitral bridge catheter system is similar to the surgical bridge in form and function, but we made it fully retrievable, repositionable anchors and implant at all stages. Even after you put the implant, we can take it up. I think that's great. Also, if it fails for some reason in the years to come, we can put a mitral clip through that, we can put a Pascal through that, we can blow it up and put a new valve. So it doesn't cancel out any further options. Catheter system is very easy. So the procedures can use it very uh, comfortably in a less time. Procedural imaging system is extremely simple. It's a single device for both valves. It is not a niche device. That means it can be put on over 90% of the patients. All the more, it is so simple, and the time it takes to put one of them in the mitral position is one hour and try to put one hour. So there's a potential to do this as a same day procedure. That is huge, that is huge. So here's a little video. The video has to be queued in. Can you activate the video? We tried it before. Is there any way we can start the video or not? Yeah. Here's the catheter system. It's a little puncture in the vein. And it goes through the septum. Here's the mitral valve. And we make sure that it's positioned well. And then the, now the steering catheter, which is sort of like a snake, comes down into the post back part of the annulus. And the anchors are driven, and it flexes again like a snake, going to the front part. And you have the anchor, it has two tethers, you see it. So we can cinch them and find out what the size bridge we want. So that optimizes the outcome. Here's the bridge coming in, locking it in. Because it's coaxial, it pulls the posterior part to the anterior one as you lock that part. It's a simple, it's gone. The leak is gone. So now we can unscrew that and take it out if you want. 
So the same thing is done in the tricuspid. This tricuspid bridge is similar. So what have we done? So far we've created the system, we built the prototypes, we did a lot of bench testing, we've done serial acute animal studies completed with successful mitral bridge implants. The delivery system is via groin. Effective endpoints are already achieved. So we'll be starting Q2 this year, chronic animal safety studies. And the durability of this uh, device has been already testing, initiated, will complete in the next three to four months. We have a very broad intellectual property. Eight patent, patent families, 14 US and six foreign issued patents, six pending non-provisional, covering all phases, mitral, tricuspid, surgical, transcatheter, you name it. Very experienced leadership team. I don't have to say anything about it. You already know. Rich Ferrari, who's on the board, serial medtech entrepreneur, 35 years of CEO, co-founder of multiple teams, multiple exits, over a billion dollar. And Tim McNeil is here, our chief operating officer, 30 years of experience in the space, executive leadership position, recently got an exit team in the Harpoon Medical, acquired by Edwards for 250 million. Prior to that, he's been in ATS and other technologies where also got an exit. We have a fantastic engineer, you know, Gene Rees is the principal product development engineer, 25 years in this medtech product development, Hanson Robotics, PQ Bypass, a great catheter experience, wizard to produce catheters. Great consultants, Carlos Ruiz, my former uh, colleague from Lenox Hill in New Jersey and Hackensack University. Vivek Reddy in the Sinai Hospital, Maurice Bugbiner, Scripps, all of them are very good in mitral space, have used mitral clips, and other mitral technology. Roadmap is very simple. We're starting the DVMV phase in Q3. We're going to do first in man later part of Q1 and early part of Q2 2023. Eight to 10 patients, six to 12 months follow up. And we are now raising Series B financing Exit strategy, obviously, potential acquisition by strategics. The historical acquisition transaction has been 225 to $750 million, pretty uh, good exits. So the investment opportunity in our technology, significant unmet clinical needs, huge market, billion, $5 billion market, a new approach, very disruptive differentiated technology like taking off in space, overcoming limitation of first generation device and validate a concept, experience leadership and winning strategy. To conclude, your time is limited. Don't waste it living in someone else's life. Don't be trapped by dogma, which is living with the results of other people thinking, as Steve Jobs saying. Thanks, if you have any questions, call me. By the way, this is not iPhone, this is our bridge. <laughs>